First uh, speaker is uh, Max Adamov. He's working in Nexus. Actually, he's here. And he's going to present his own journey to scaling uh, product development uh, in uh, actually Accents, and probably it's going to be a lot of interesting insight. I'm 100% sure. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, so, it, guys, it's going to be take about like 40 minutes. At the end, you can ask your questions. And um, okay, let's start. Please warm welcome, Max Adamo. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. While well, the presentation uh, is uh, starting, I can say that uh, while I've tried to find uh, this room, I saw that uh, saw the arrow to technology and management uh, uh, house here, and uh, personally, uh, I was happy about it because actually, I think uh, my presentation will be in somewhere between between technology and uh, management. Okay. I think better. Uh, let's begin. Uh, so, a few words about myself. Why should you listen to uh, me and spend your best morning on Cyprus here? Uh, I have quite big experience in building product in fintech. You see uh, mostly in uh, <coughs> banks or other fintech companies. Actually, I started my journey a long time ago as a designer. And then I have an entrepreneurship experience running my own company, building a startup, which, for, which failed, by the way. Uh, and now working yeah, as a product focused on building products and building teams. Um, okay, first of all, we are going to talk about product design, scaling the teams. But uh, you may be interested why you should be even care about it, about such boring things like organizational design, team collaboration, accountability, and so on and so forth. It was me thinking about it uh, two years ago or something like this. But then after a couple of uh, reflections and uh, poor quarterly review, <laughs> joking, uh, just reflections, uh, I started to think about oh, Emoji doesn't look so good here. <laughs> I started to think about the ultimate goal of every product manager, product leader, or whatever. And uh, the goal is actually to drive outcome to the company and to do it uh, in most effective, most um, cost-effective uh, way. So how one person manager could uh, even drive impact by creating great product strategy and by delivering this strategy. And here, all the things connected with uh, product teams uh, come. So you have product strategy, you have teams. <laughs> at, at the end, you have uh, some outcome on all. And uh, the interesting thing that uh, how effectively this strategy is going to be delivered is heavily dependent on the team's structure. Uh, let's start at the beginning. It was January 2020. 20, yes. <laughs> uh, snowy morning. Not snowy, of course, in Cyprus, but at that time I was not in Cyprus and it was quite cold. So, <clears throat> what I had. I had uh, two products at uh, quite different stages of the life cycle. One product uh, was at, he, uh, he reached product market fit, initial product market fit, and uh, was at the stage of improving it, improving product market fit, something before big scale, I can say. And uh, there was an the idea, there was a goal to build brand new product. Um, and uh, so the second one was at the beginning. And uh, I had two teams, one front-end team and one platform team. That's all. And me. Uh, you can see, unfortunately, but there was an emoji with bomb blowing your head. And I will <laughs> explain why. <laughs> 
actually, yeah, yes, you maybe will find it hard to believe, but we had some problems. <laughs> Actually, a lot of them. First of all, uh, because products are different uh, stages of their life cycle, uh, they require different product strategies. And uh, different product strategies uh, consistently uh, requires different actual processes, a different actual product type of product work at all. So uh, at the same time, we have to run fast. We have to support one product. We have to build new products, etc. cetera. Uh, and with that, uh, teams set up. Uh, it was very hard because uh, <clears throat> when we have some kind of I don't know new feature that we want to build, okay, no one team can build it on their own. There are a lot of dependencies between them, a lot of uh, problems in collaboration and etc. Uh, we started to scale team by adding persons one by one, and uh, <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, one team from 10 team became too big, too big. I, I, as I remember, we started about, I don't know, eight persons and finished within 13, 14, something like this. So can you imagine the daily of uh, 15 people? Come on. <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all. Um, also, there was no clear uh, understanding of accountability. For example, some back, back occurred who should uh, first uh, be responsible for it. We don't know. Uh, all planning activities uh, took too much time because a lot of dependencies and interdependencies. And of course, OK, you plan, but <laughs> after it, life, life uh, all things changes, and you have to redo it and redo it and redo. Uh, and we started to think how it was possible to solve these issues, if it is possible at all, I don't know. And um, we find, of course, one zero bullet, one recipe of success that will solve all problems. Is it any chance that you trust me? <laughs> of course, no. Uh, because one smart guy in 2010 <laughs> wrote that uh, the first rule of organizational design is that all organizational designs are bad. And I totally agree it. Uh, so there is no one recipe, there is no single approach how to build the perfect structure. And uh, if somebody tries to uh, explain you that there is no, don't trust that person and don't give them mo him money. <laughs> um, but I want, uh, if uh, there is only one thing that you could uh, know today, understand and uh, take home, is that things that uh, First of all, organizational design and team design is very important. And the second, that actually this structure, these design decisions, they persist at any level. I don't know, if you are CEO, you could make the decisions. If you just lead in one team, you still have ability to perform any changes and take actions. So, uh, we started to think, what is important for us? What factors? And first, it was accountability. Uh, we uh, want our teams uh, to be uh, accountable for specific things, for specific areas. So teams should be aware of what they are accountable for. And actually, the second part of accountability is that they should have all en enough resources, all enough knowledge, technology, etc., to drive and no impact on that area, on that area. Uh, the second important thing is that we are as a product area we should be able to be accountable for one big uh, shared goal so teams should not work in silos one by one and of course collaboration uh, we should have uh, smooth and effective collaboration to not uh, like uh, wind us to the face, but to help us to deliver our results. Let's imagine the situation we, we have the best, I don't know, uh, accountability, communications, etc. Definitely it will be one person who is super accountable for what he is doing. 
he don't have any problem with co coordination. Some persons, are, of course, do have these problems <laughs> with coordination with themselves, but okay. Uh, but so in real life, it is impossible, of course. Pro product can be built and delivered by one person. It can be built only by teams. You have team, you have some problems within team, etc. You could uh, solve it. But if you want to deliver more, if you want to run more, uh, you have to scale it. You started by adding person to one team, then you start to uh, adding teams, etc. And a lot of problems occur, actually, because uh, by adding any person, by adding, adding any team, uh, if total efficiency decreasing. So it's very important to make it as smooth as possible. You know, there are a lot of signs that uh, uh, prove that by adding uh, people, by adding teams, overall the efficiency decreases. So uh, we started to think, what are the um, signs? OK, we make some changes, how we could uh, evaluate it, how we could decide uh, if we have now good structure or bad. And we uh, pointed these things. So first of all, decision making should be fast and easily communicated for everybody. Planning. Uh, we should not have so much dependencies, and we should not uh, I don't know, spend too much time like before. Focus and engagement, yeah, but it was one of the problems because uh, by scaling the teams, the overall I don't know, level of focus, level of engagement, of course, decreases. We want everybody to be highly focused at each moment of time uh, on the things that uh, at my, that at that moment is important. So and uh, prioritization and goal settings and team evaluation. Yeah, these things should be addressed too. Uh, and we started to think what teams could be uh, accountable for. I don't know for money growth, for any metric driven, for developing new features or supporting the existing ones. I don't know for some operational support, etc. A lot of things actually. But uh, if we try to summarize it, we can say that in general we have uh, two ways. We have uh, future-based designs or outcome-based designs. So uh, in future-based design, team are structured around some part of the product, platform, services, etc. And in outcome-based design, a team structured across specific outcomes, metrics, or goals. Uh, each of these uh, actually have uh, pros and cons, of course. And um, we were thinking, oh, sorry, em emoji is not my <laughs> part, as you see. <laughs> um, we were thinking what we should choose future-based, outcome-based. Should we have one backlog for all teams and use some approach like large scale, scrum, safe, etc., etc., or each team should have own specialization and own backlog? Actually, we, uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, some kind of mixed approach. Uh, so let's uh, begin from the beginning. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, two products, two teams. That setup, uh, despite having a lot of problems uh, that I mentioned, uh, it uh, actually had some benefits as well because it uh, was good for delivering some kind of uh, big, complex technical task, which we had a lot of at that time. But uh, what we have now? We have now uh, two products on more or less the same product lifecycle stage. Uh, we have a dedicated team for one product which is focused on that area and doesn't have any dependencies, etc. Uh, we have uh, feature-based teams for the other product, uh, which are slightly specialized. So each team actually can uh, do any part of the job, any kind, but they have also specialization to be more focused on that area that uh, they are working on to better understand customer needs to better understand issues, etc. And uh, the most important that each team now can deliver any result, any feature end-to-end -end without any dependencies, without uh, any problem with communication, with aligning plans with others, etc. Okay, not all, but 95% of the tasks. Yeah. It's much easier to plan tasks, but of course this has uh, the downside too. 
because uh, each team now have a uh, more complex tech stack delivered on all platforms and uh, have bugs on all platforms, etc. And uh, uh, this approach requires more focus, more effort on uh, collaboration between teams on uh, uh, T-shaping, I don't know, for example, to be able for front-end guys to do some small back-end job, for example. But it uh, gives us a lot of benefits. Um, and what interesting uh, reflection we have on this. So now, yeah, tasks cannot not fallen between different teams. We know that uh, each team can do it, and uh, there are no problems at all. Uh, this setup was actually quite uh, feature-based, I mean. Uh, quite easy to establish because it's established organically based on the architecture of the product on the features. And uh, having this uh, smooth, light focus uh, actually uh, uh, lead us to increasing expertise between within team in that product area, which is definitely a good sign. But of course, uh, it has uh, some drawdowns, interesting drawdowns, uh, which was not so obvious for me. Because uh, when teams are focused on delivering specific features, not business outcomes at all, it's uh, usually hard to match how each particular feature uh, connected with uh, overall product strategy, with overall business result. And it is hard to uh, evaluate uh, is the team uh, doing job good or not, for example, because they could fail uh, based on different re reasons. They could uh, uh, fail, for example, delivery, but, or even they could just p uh, choose to do on the bad things, not the wrong things. Uh, yes, and uh, one more reflection from personally from my side. Uh, if you have a decision to make reorganization or not, the, so the short answer is no, don't do it. Uh, because actually it is, uh, first of all, it is deeply uncomfortable for all involved people. And uh, it uh, drastically decreases the uh, performance of the teams and uh, sometimes for the quite big transitional periods. Uh, but uh, there, there are two options when you have to do it, actually. Actually, one. Uh, let's see. So uh, when strategy changed, it is very important to think about current stru structure, current design. Is it aligned with this new strategy or not? Because if not, you will not be able to efficiency, efficient delivery of this strategy. The second uh, thing is also connected actually with the first one, because when uh, your product, for example, at the beginning, you're trying to find your product, you are trying to achieve product market fit, and it requires, I don't know, running a lot of experiments, sitting with customers uh, for long hours, etc. cetera. Uh, and, but then, for example, when you started to scale your product, it's absolutely different approach, different type of work, and you should have different structure or even different people sometime to do it. So when uh, life cycle product change his uh, life cycle stage, you should adapt your strategy and you should adapt your structure. What's next? It, is, uh, it was a story about some time ago, but now I'm exactly at that moment. <laughs> What's next? Uh, actually, definitely, we will go to the outcome-based design. Why? Because uh, it will give us these opportunities. Everyone will be focused on ex exact business result. Uh, it will be definitely easier to evaluate team success because we have, okay, we have specific metric and if metric changed, perfectly. No, let's see why. Uh, it will be more easier to adapt to some change, to change the plan, to uh, just throw out all planned scope for the quarter and uh, find out what things are important now. Uh, and of course, uh, I believe uh, personally that uh, every person should be more engaged, will be more engaged in product, product success. Uh, how we already, actually we started to do it and how uh, I started from North Star metric. Uh, we uh, find that it is uh, 
loyal number of uh, active customers and we decomposed it to different components and uh, we were planning that each team will be accountable for different component of our North Stack metric. But it is a next story and <laughs> we're happy to share the results. Uh, that's all, uh, the last but not the least, uh, I find out some uh, useful links and resources uh, connected with the organization of changes, with team leadership, etc. You will find it in the presentation. That's all from my side, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, while you prepare questions, I have mine. So I'm going to be the first person who asks the questions. Maxim, you've changed the structure, so it was like front-end, team working all together with themselves, like front-end working with front-end people, and back-end teams working with back-end people. And you made that cross-functional team, front-end working with back-end people. Uh, was it any like resistance from developers? Did they complain? Did they suffer? What did you tell you? It's just kind of bullshit things. You just changing the process for the change of the process, that kind of stuff they usually say. Do we have a recording now? <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> you can be absolutely open. <laughs> I, I believe you know the answer. Of course, uh, it, uh, there are a lot of resistance. And uh, I mentioned that any changes, especially this, this one, uh, is very um, uncomfortable on a personal level. So it, it's a big part of uh, this work of implementing the changes to align everybody around it to, under, to explain why it is so important. So, kind of story. Any, any story of that resistance? What people tell you? How, how it was like going? Without bad words, yes? Yes, no bad words, but just maybe. But true, yeah, mm -hmm. true story. Some true stories. Actually, a lot, lot of stories, and it's uh, like day-to-day -day activities. I don't know when uh, a front-end guy here like his job and uh, he told me okay i will create this screen and that's all i don't want to know anything what happens after it and that's all um, but uh, so it take i don't know maybe a couple of months to overcome uh, these things and uh, the, in the interesting thing here is that when only one person started to act in that new way of thinking and uh, one person after a couple of days, the second person, because nobody wants to be the last person. <laughs> nobody. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions, guys, do you have? Please raise your hands. Yeah, so can we just uh, hand off uh, the mic? Or can, oh, okay, we'll give mine for a second. Hello, Max. Uh, so uh, my question is that uh, in the beginning of your speech, you talked about the lifetime of the project and the product market that changes. So what would you recommend uh, to do organization-wise for the company that is uh, pivoting the product market fit yet again, uh, the second or the third time maybe, and is feeling like this may be the last niche for the project that they can do. So if this is a quite um, successful product, but it doesn't have a lot of new developments that can be added, it's like a Red Ocean, something like that, what you would recommend to do in terms of accountability and keeping the, the system and the organization fresh and working towards the goals that the team already has? Thank you. Let me try to go to... I can't... Okay, uh, if you have a product, for example, which reached product market fit and we have it quite uh, successful product, but uh, we don't have huge growth, we don't uh, have I don't know, a lot of new customers, etc. It's the best uh, moment and to start maybe not pivoting, but enriching your product market fit by adding new customer segments. I don't know, for example, you are... I don't know, your property listing marketplace. Okay, and people using your, site, your service to find the new property. You could, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, go to new market. Okay, it, it will be enriching user segments. You could add uh, more value. And uh, for example, you could I don't know, all add a loan, loan calculator for a site or a loan Sell, start selling loans, so it will be a new value for the whole new user segment. 
Okay. Uh, more questions? Yeah, one more question. Okay. Yeah, here, here. here is. Sorry. Ah, okay, sorry. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, in your example that you had a team of uh, front-end team and then a, a platforms team, uh, what would you do or would you do anything if uh, the platforms team, uh, let's say that uh, the platform team is working on a feature-by-feature -feature basis and each feature is difficult because it has hardware and has all of that um, uh, uh, problems, and let's say the front-end team has the difficulty that uh, it needs to you know, collect and aggregate and, and manage all of these features so you can provide one single uh, front end that customers want. Uh, what would you do or would you change anything if the platforms team can't really guarantee uh, any feature? It's a best effort uh, basis all the time. Every feature is best effort. Uh, and what I'm saying is, um, would you change something in this structure? Would you try to put the same system? Or would you leave it as is, well, I don't know, Scrum, and then the other one is Kanban, or Waterfall, or, or anything like that? Would you try to change it? Actually, it uh, depends, I believe, because um, of course it could be changed. For example, if, I don't know, every day uh, front-end team understands that uh, to deliver so anything, they have to, I don't know, wait for platform teams, they have to collect all work from platform teams, and it really slows them down. Maybe uh, if it uh, really happens every day, I think from my perspective, yes, it makes sense to change the structure and to give them opportunity to deliver, I don't know, some features uh, without waiting for the platform team. You could, actually, you could not, uh, you may not change everything by just, I don't know, add, give them a couple of uh, developers to, I don't know, to create some new APIs and, and et cetera. It will uh, make them able to, I don't know, deliver some maybe not so complex features, but some features for which uh, gives customers value yeah. as well. Okay. More questions? Here, here. Can you raise your hand, please? Yeah, thank you. Maxim, uh, thanks for your pr presentation. Uh, in it, uh, you mentioned that uh, you have started using uh, more and more outcome-based uh, metrics uh, measures. How did you address uh, um, a standard problem uh, with outcome-based metrics, a time gap between actions uh, and uh, the result? Yeah, thank you for this question. Brilliant one, actually, uh, because uh, usually you did some job, but the results will come, I don't know, after in months or a couple of months, etc. So significant results. The trick here is, uh, first of all, to target the right metric, that uh, because some metrics are usually they could be used by a leading indicator not lagging indicator. For example, if you, I don't know, you measure the overall company uh, revenue, of course it will be lagging oh, after all job, after all marketing activities, etc., etc. But uh, in most cases, uh, there are some connected metrics which could be used for le as leading indicators and which will correlate with later success. And you could use this metrics as a day-to-day, -day, uh, I don't see as a day-to-day -day goals. Can you give an example? <laughs> Choosing the right metric is uh, like, uh, I don't know, Kung Fu 80 level, or something like this. Uh, each co company uh, approaches differently. I don't know, for example, uh, Facebook is, does, doesn't uh, measure money. They measure monthly active uh, users as a leading indicator for money, as a leading indicator for any advertisement, revenue, etc. Amplitude uses number of users who actually uh, makes queries, not just users, but makes queries because these users correlate with their success. So it depends on the product. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, more questions. I see the, uh, you raise your hand? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> any more questions? Yeah, here. No. 
<laughs> I think uh, it. We, 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 <laughs> we, <didn't>, um, <laughs> we need question. <laughs> before the you question was about uh, do we have uh, different product owners for each team? Uh, no, the number of teams doesn't uh, match one-to-one uh, -to, -one to the number of uh, product owners or product managers yeah. right now. And uh, it uh, works for us, but maybe when we uh, stick to more outcome-based design, we will uh, fix it as well. Thank you. Mm. Uh, Two product owners, managers for four teams. Okay. Here is the question, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll give you next. Uh, thank you, Maxim. My name is Dimitri. Uh, I, I'm wondering, you're talking about metrics in a level of company level metrics. And how do you manage to translate these metrics to individual and team goals and individual goals? And uh, what's the process are you following? Uh, KPIs or KRs? Or, uh, and how do you manage to train the team on that? We use to use, sorry for <laughs> tautologies, some kind of uh, cascading uh, metrics from top level to bottom level. It, it is not strictly OKR based, I think, but it's kind of by uh, decomposing and cascading on each level. What about personal performance? No. Uh, no, I'm not sure that it's a true right approach to uh, decompose it so, how to say, it's into small, so small chunks for each person. Uh, thank you, Maxim. My name is Vadim. So my question is, uh, so you uh, implement this new uh, organizational structure for two teams, for two products, and uh, then uh, when you were successful, you became successful, uh, was it spread along the company to other products, to other teams that was not involved before in the, your processes? Of course, uh, we shared some practices, but not uh, the exact uh, approach. Because as I mentioned, it heavily depends on current situation, current product, current stage. And in other, for other teams, the situation uh, differs from ours. OK, thank you. More questions? Any questions? OK, thank you very much, Maxim. Let's thank you, guys. Big, big round of applause for Maxim.